to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again. And today, just like any other day, we have another special guest. We have a returning guest. We talked to Brad Taylor about a couple years ago this time. This amazing former Special Forces officer and Lieutenant Colonel Brad Taylor has another book for y'all, Dead Man's Hand. First and foremost, how you doing today, Brad? I'm I'm doing great. Thank you very much for having me. Yes, sir. And thanks for your team. Give me a copy, man. I appreciate being able to have the honor to read this. Let's talk about uh, your military career and how that helps you shape these stories in these uh, novels. Yeah, well, I, I don't put anything in the books that I've actually done. I mean, I, I don't sit there and say, well, I remember this hit I did in Iraq there. I'm going to put it in a book. But you, you can't help but fall back on your own experiences. I mean, if you were going to write a book and you had a scene about uh, swimming in the ocean, you'd think about what it was like to swim in the ocean. If you're going to write something about riding a bike, you'd think about, you know, what was it like the last time I rode a bike. And for me, it's the same way. If I'm writing a story about a gunfight or operational planning or anything like that, I, I naturally fall back on my experiences when it comes to the character pike logan i mean man he is just sharp he's on it and he's just extremely focused on details kind of describe the storyline in this book and how he and he is leading his team yeah well i one, one thing i like to point out i mean i'll write the books one of the things you see in the you know hollywood or anything else is you know the 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 protagonist, the, the good guy, is always doing the right thing. He's always making the right decision. If he, if only let, they'd let him take a drill bit to this guy's knee, he'd solve the whole, entire problem. And that's not what combat's like. I mean, you make the best decision you can make at the time, and sometimes those decisions are good and sometimes are bad. And you live with that decision for the rest of your life. And I try to capture that on the page. When you develop these storylines, I mean... It's just, it's like watching a movie. It's, it's hard to start reading. And the details you have from setting the scene, setting the emotions from everybody. I mean, just in the very beginning when uh, it starts out and it, going in contest with everything going Ukraine, Russia, how you uh, paint the picture so clear and, and keep it moving because it's a page turner. Yeah, that's, that's actually what... That's one of the hardest things about writing a book is you want to give the reader, you want the reader just to be able to flow through the book without any, he doesn't have to sit there and think about anything. He's reading the book. Uh, but at the same time, you've got to develop the character that's there. You want the reader to get a mental image of who they've, who they're reading about right now, who they've met in the past, who, who they know who this guy is. And it, it's, it's, that's really hard to do without, you know, just bogging down everything and saying, we're going to take a time out now. I'm going to give you a dossier on this guy. So you have to do it through things that aren't dossier type, you know, five foot 10, blue eyed, brown hair, blah, blah, blah. You've got to just dribble that out. This is what this guy is. This is his motivations. This is why he's doing it. We're talking to Brad Taylor in his book, Dead Man's Hand, a Pike Logan novel. Not giving too much away in the book, but when uh, Pike Logan finds himself caught in a crossfire between Putin's agents and the wolves, how does his perspective on the rules mission involve throughout the novel? Yeah, well, that the big thing, the whole thing about the dead man's hand, it's it's a nuclear switch that Putin's put in place. So he wants to uh, the, the 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 partisans from the wolves. They want to end the war in Ukraine. They decide the only way to do that is to get rid of Putin. So the next guy that comes in will say, "We're pulling out of Ukraine." Pike finds out that if you do get rid of Putin, there's going to be a nuclear war. And so he's now caught between the horns of dilemma of, I'd really like to help these partisans do their mission. But on the other hand, that's going to cause catastrophic loss. So now he's torn between, I, I literally have to protect Putin from the guys that I would like to win. When it comes to the complexity of the U S military, you are able to incorporate current events involving that into the narrative. How hard is it to do that? And like you said earlier, not go into any special details. Uh, it's getting a lot easier now because I've been out of it for a while. Um, I basically what I honestly what I do is look at uh, there's three things for classification. There's units, there's locations, and then there's capability. Units and locations are easy. I just don't put them in. 
capability on her hand is a little bit harder because there's a lot of capabilities out there. And I now turn to criminals. <laughs> They're figuring out capabilities left and right. Hackers and, uh, you know, thieves and all these other kind of guys are, are figuring out capabilities that uh, I never knew existed. And I use what they do. When you look at the opportunities you have to just educate people with uh, military, but give them a unique perspective, like an inside look, what do you hope people who are non-military will be able to gain from your series of all your books that you've written? Uh, I, I Actually, what I would like to get is my primary goal is they... When I get an email that says I didn't get any sleep last night because I had to finish your book, that's my primary <laughs> goal. So I don't have any overarching... Uh, you know, I, I, I don't do politics in the books. I don't, uh, I, I, I'm a reader before I'm a writer. So if I, somebody's feed me a bunch of political stuff, either from the left or the right, I don't care which way I don't like reading that book, but I guess and for this book it would be that, uh, you know, counter leadership targeting or, uh, um, regime change, whatever you want to call it. There's always second and third order effects. And, uh, we rarely ever think through those. Like I said earlier, your books, they read like movies. Are you considering maybe turning some of your books into any visual in the future? Well, sure. I'd like to, but I mean, I don't control that. That's Hollywood. <laughs> so, I mean, I've yeah. got, you know, people always contact me about, I want to do this and do that. And if it ever comes to happen, that's, that'd be great. But I mean, I write books. I, I didn't write a screenplay, so hopefully it happens, but I'm not holding my breath. Once again, talking to Brad Taylor, too, on there, talking about him and his book, Dead Man's Hand. It is a Pike Logan novel. Last question for you. Pipe Logan is a character that you just want to root for. And when you develop him and make all these twists and turns, how easy is it for you to to make those plot twists to continue his legacy in these uh, novels? Uh, it's actually very hard. And it gets harder as I go along because <laughs> yeah. you don't want to do the same thing you did in the last book. This is the 18th book. So uh, that's one of the harder things is like, you know, I'm going to do this. And then I'm like, ah, you just did that. Or I did it two books ago, or three books ago, or five books ago. So it gets harder as I go along. Once again, you can get this book right now. It is available for you to get Dead Man's Hand, a Pike Logan novel. We had the true honor this morning talking to Brad Taylor with this exclusive. Once again, sir, thank you for your time, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me.